الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد فبس إن شاء الله just give you guys a quick uh, reminder إن شاء الله because every night الحمد لله we've been doing this now and we're going and you guys have been reciting the Quran in one way or another and I thought it's important now that I mention to you some of the manners and the etiquette with regards to the Quran one of the things with regards to the Quran is that brothers the Quran it has to be implemented ينادونهم ألم نكن معكم قالوا بل ولكنكم فتنتم أنفسكم وتربصتم وارتبتم وغرتكم الأماني وغرتكم الأماني حتى جيء أمر الله وغركم بالله الغرور فاليوم لا يؤخذ منكم فدية ولا من الذين كفروا مأويكم النار هي موليكم وبئس المصير Aiden, you okay? Alhamdulillah. Where are we going today, bro? We're going to go to the mountain uh, Uhud, where the battle take, put, uh, take the, the, uh, where the battle took place. Mashallah, what are you expecting to see today? Scenery is beautiful. Scenery, that's, that's the way, and just learn about the history. Inshallah. Inshallah. I think the history this is going to be quite good today, Inshallah. So I like your shades. I'm not bad. Assalamu alaikum. What are you saying? Inshallah. That's a good fly, that I'm not bad. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Inshallah, we're just going to go to the mountain of Uhud. And there we're just going to basically take a little lesson from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because a, a really uh, um, important <coughs> battle which is very important in Islam, it took place there. So we take some lessons and benefits and apply it to us today inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're going to Mount Uhud. Yeah? All the brothers are ready. You know what I mean? Inshallah. Inshallah. You've been to Uhud before? I've been to Uhud before, but not like this. Yeah. Never had a history lesson there? Never ever, never. So we're gonna inshallah we're excited. Let's go inshallah. <laughs> right there what you can see is the mountain of Uhud. But before I talk to you about the battle of Uhud, I want to talk to you about a battle that took place slightly before this. And that's called the battle of Badr. And the reason I want to talk to you about the battle of Badr first is because I want to compare the outcome of both of these battles. The night before the battle took place, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't sleep, but everyone else slept. And Allah gave them a nice, beautiful sleep but the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was a role model he didn't sleep that night no the prophet he stood up begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole night he was crying he was begging Allah he would say Allah please don't let them lose tomorrow but Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was a warrior he was from the 10 promised Jannah and as he's fighting forward and he's going through the ranks of the disbelievers they don't want to fight with him so they move back they move back, no one wants it from Abu Ubaidah. But suddenly as he's moving forward, a man pops up in front of him and he challenges him in the battlefield, ready to fight him. But Abu Ubaidah this time, he backs off. He backs off, he doesn't want to fight this guy, which is strange. Everyone else is scared of him. But now he backs off from this person as if he doesn't want to fight him. So he moves and changes direction. He presses forward in another direction. He's slicing them. He's going forward and he's protecting the religion of Allah. He's protecting the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's not letting no one come anywhere near to the Prophet. But then suddenly they back off and this other man presses forward again. We're all confused. Abu Ubaidah backs up one more time. Who is this man that he doesn't want to fight? Who is this man that he keeps backing away from? So the third time he changed his course, he went into another direction. He's pressing forward. Again, they don't want it with him. They know what time of the week it is. No one wants it with Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah radiallahu anhu. But again, this man comes forward. He presses forward on Abu Ubaidah one more time. This time, my brothers, Abu Ubaidah can't go back. He can't turn right, he can't turn left. 
He has to go forward and fight this man. He has to fight this man and engage with him. The reason why he has to is because if he lets this man through, this man's going to kill Muslims. He's going to spill blood. He might even try to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Abu Ubaidah looks at him. He picks up his sword and he strikes him on his head, his neck and his head falls to the ground. That man was his dad. That was his dad. The reason he was backing away was because he didn't want to have to fight his own father. He didn't want to engage with his dad. But his dad left him no choice. He was going to kill innocent people. So he had to defend the honor of the Muslims. He had to defend the honor of, his fa of, of the Prophet. He had to save the Muslims. And Allah tested him by putting him face to face with his own father. Brothers, this is the way these men were tested. This is the way these women were tested. We weren't tested like they were tested. Now, inshallah, what I want to do is I want to take you guys up to the top of this hill. And from the top of this hill, we're going to carry on the story. And we're going to now draw the contrast between the battle that took place here. So please, inshallah, if you come with me, then after that, you can look around and enjoy yourselves. Them moving like mountain goats. So this battle, it had serious significance. The Muslims, they couldn't lose. They couldn't lose. Because if they did, they would lose their city. So they brought the fight right here. The Prophet Wasallam was a military strategist. He positioned some people from his army who had bows and arrows right here. The archers. They were, that day, what are snipers to us? The Prophet told him, don't get off, don't get off this hill. No matter what happens, don't climb down. Even if you see crows pecking at our dead corpses, do not come off this hill. Look at that command, it's clear. The Prophet said, I do not want to be disobeyed in this. Do not argue, do not question, we're in war. Do not come off this hill. But the people who are on this hill, may Allah be pleased with those companions, they made a mistake. They thought the battle was over. So they ran off the hill. Some of them said, no, don't go. The Prophet told us, don't leave this place. But others said, no, look at them, they're going back. And we are not going to get the spoils of war if we stay here. So they ran off the mountain. What did they do? They disobeyed the messenger. 70 noble companions got killed that day. Right there, you see that graveyard? That is a graveyard where 70 of the greatest men who ever walked the planet Earth are buried. From them is Hamza radiallahu anhu, who was what? the greatest Mujahid. And Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu, brothers, pay attention, because we've got some sweet boys amongst us. Pay attention. Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu is what you would have said, he was a sweet boy in Mecca. He had the nicest garments and the most beautiful perfume. They would say if he came to a place and he left, if he came to a place and he left, you'd know he was there because of the smell of his fragrance. He was loved, everyone loved him. He was the golden boy of Mecca. But when he became Muslim, his family abandoned him and left him. He had nothing. When he died in the battle of Uhud here, the Prophet wasallam brought a white sheet to shroud him with. But the sheet was so small that when they tried to cover his head, his feet would be exposed. And when they tried to cover his feet, his head would be exposed. Look at what he died with. He didn't even have a white sheet to shroud him properly. They gave everything up for Allah's sake. And they literally had everything before. But what Allah gave them was better. He died as a shaheed. He's buried right there. And inshallah, he's going to be from the foremost in paradise. In fact, we don't need to say inshallah because we know he is. Textual proof stipulates this. These men, they gave up everything for their religion. The lecture by Imran was very touching. MashaAllah. It was very beneficial. Alhamdulillah, it was amazing. It's just a perfect reminder of what the boys need. That was the most powerful when it got me when he said that that person was his father that he killed. It's the sacrifice they made, and at the end of the day, we can't even sacrifice That's, that's correct, things. that's correct, yeah. It was touching. It makes you think when you want to go back to the UK, you want to like, give up. Like, like, don't disobey the Prophet, inshallah. You know, live right now. How are you feeling right now? 
So, like, refreshed after that. I haven't, we haven't done as much as we could have done to, to make Allah happy with us or to honour these as others behind us. That penetrated my heart straight. Alhamdulillah, man. I'm feeling good, man. Everything's just like, it's just been beautiful so far. Especially um, Imran's talk, that was just like, I don't know, something else, man. Inshallah, when I go back, I want to let go of things and sacrifice things for Islam and to be a better person when I go back. Well, I've heard that story a number of times. But when uh, Imran delivers it with such um, passion and emotion, you can't help but stop and think, actually, you know, the reality of actually how, how powerful this speech is, how story this is, and the lessons that we need to take from this story. So, hearing it in that sense, yeah, it, it hit home, alhamdulillah. Are you having a blast out here though, in general, yeah? A blast, yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm having a nice spiritual blast, alhamdulillah. Sure. And are there any lessons that you're taking back to the UK? Yeah, it's to uh, re uh, repent for any sins I may have and uh, not to abandon the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallah feek, man. But you're having a good time out here in general, yeah? Uh, best time. Alhamdulillah. Sam taking care of you? Always. I'm doing, doing great. It's an under, anything I give you is an understatement. Like I said before, before when you weren't recording. <laughs> I, feel like I, I feel like I've heard that before. I'm in a bit of deja vu. Yeah. Uh, what was your uh, favourite part of the story? The part when they was on when Prophet Muhammad told him not to leave the hill, and they left the hill, and then that them by them leaving the hill, Prophet Muhammad was harmed in battle and they heard the enemy saying we've killed Muhammad and then they rushed back for me that 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 was just like it just it just I don't know I, it related to a lot of things to do with my life but I can't even explain it right now but it just related a lot to do with my life and how much I've been ignoring signs and stuff like that and ignoring because they ignored a uh, direct um, message from from Muhammad but but um, by them ignoring that message, he was harmed. And for me, I feel like I've been ignoring a lot of messages and I was, I've been harmed from ignoring those messages. So that hit my heart a lot, do you know what I mean? Allah, it was beautiful, man, so beautiful. Everyone, literally, you could just, I can see everyone's faces, man. Everyone's just so touched by it. You know, sometimes when you hear stories of the, uh, of the, um, of the, um, Sahabas, sometimes when you hear it, like you can't really picture it. So now, you know, when you're here, like you're on the mountain, you're looking at the mountain, and, you know, it's just so like you feel like you know, you can proper picture it. So, Allah was emotional, man, so emotional. It just shows that you know, with Allah's help, Allah, Allah can do anything, man. You know, if you put your trust in Allah, Allah can help you in any of your situations. Yeah. It reminded me of the, the importance in uh, following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one thing that I really, really, really benefited is the love of the companions, Akhi. You know, I really had to look into myself and ask myself, do I really love Allah and His Messenger? Would I really sacrifice the things that they sacrifice? Five star Umrah! Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, how are you guys doing? I wanted to take this opportunity to invite you to one of our epic Umrah trips. Brothers, in February inshallah ta'ala, we have Umrah with the Mandan part 5. Okay, I know if you guys have been following us online, you're probably thinking, but what happened to part four? Part four already got sold out. In fact, it's oversubscribed, and that happened six months before we even, you know, going on the trip. So that's why we're having to actually open up uh, tickets for the next trip, which is going to be in February, inshallah ta'ala. So if you don't act fast now, that trip is expected to be sold out in the next couple months as well. Okay, and then there's not any other, there is no other trip scheduled for that anytime soon. Sisters, we have an opportunity for you guys as well. October half term this year inshallah ta'ala we're taking our second sisters trip I would love it if you guys could join us inshallah ta'ala of course you have to bring a mahram either way if you're interested please go to the phone number below you can call you can message us on whatsapp you can get in touch with us whatever way inshallah ta'ala and express your interest and someone from our team will take it up with you inshallah ta'ala but just know that these spaces are about to go like hot cakes on this day where I'm making this video already Half the spaces for the sisters' trip are already gone. Alhamdulillah. So now there's a few left. Inshallah ta'ala, 
If you guys want to come, we'd absolutely love to accommodate you. Just call the number below. Brothers, February, sisters, October. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.